Happy, Happy Place Home Studios. <laughs> <laughs>
panels here. So, you know, because when you're configuring this, you can really program almost every button here, uh, the stomp buttons, and it's nice to know what they are and what they're going to do in the preset that you're, that you're working with. So this is Helix Floor, and then Helix uh, LT is another uh, floor model. There's a rack mount uh, version of the Helix. There are a couple of specialty models that just handle um, the effects. For example, HX Effects is a specialty uh, model of this. And the, the product line keeps going, and we're going to cover that more extensively here as we get going on this basic introduction. You know, when you get the Helix, uh, it, it's not difficult to, to start with it. It's really very, very easy. And we'll, we'll cover that easy startup that you can do and, and, and be playing immediately. But there's a lot that this does. And one of the things I admire about it is for what it does, it is easy to use, but it does so much that it, ha it has that little bit of a, of a learning curve, a little bit of complexity. And it's very, very deep. You can really get deep with this thing. And some of its uh, capabilities, such as the ability to, to buy from a huge library of impulse response units out there, don't worry, I'll explain what that means, uh, makes it even more deep. And uh, it's a MIDI device, uh, so you literally can, can use uh, multiple different MIDI controllers and DAW software to have a sequence as you go through a song and, and use all kinds of different presets and all kinds of different settings and change them in real time through MIDI. So again, there's just this tremendous depth in this device and this product. I really love it. I've recommended it to many friends uh, and uh, some of them have actually even taken that recommendation and purchased it and they love it. So I really uh, have no problem talking about the Helix as something that might be a great collection uh, or a great addition to your collection in your studio. And I'm looking forward to showing you more and giving you the tour of the Helix. In this series, I, I plan many uh, uh, chapters here. And, and in fact, I've already produced chapter five, how to update the Helix, because I had to update the Helix, my Helix. Uh, they come out with major updates about once a year. So I've already produced chapter five. Now I'm, I'm going through and producing the other chapters. So there'll probably be five, six, seven uh, videos in this series. And I hope you enjoy every one of them. Be sure to put some comments down below and share your experiences with the Helix. I'll do my best to answer any questions, but let's get started and get into the basics of the Line 6 Helix. So what is this dynamic, amazing thing that you have added to your home studio? Well, it's a lot of things, but in its most basic form, it is a device that you can plug your guitar into that you can then plug in headphones or an amp or a powered speaker and play your guitar and listen to what comes out. So in that sense, it's very simple. And one thing you'll find about the Helix is that for doing simple things, it is simple to operate, but it can do a lot of things. And so with that power comes a little more of a learning curve, as I've mentioned before. But let's talk about what the Helix actually is. Now, Line 6 defines it as a guitar processor, but I had trouble finding a really good definition for what is a good guitar processor. Well, I, I kind of extended it to say it's a guitar signal processor. The Helix takes the signal from your guitar and can do almost anything with it. The most basic thing it does is, is amplify it, but it can also run numerous modeled uh, and direct uh, modifications to that signal to add effects to uh, route the signal. It's really, really a powerful processor of that signal. So I think that's why they call it a guitar processor. Now, beyond that, the Helix is an amazing modeling platform. So what is modeling? Uh, well, that one, that's one that you can do a little research on yourself because there's a lot of definitions of modeling. But basically, it's electronically and through through software and firmware recreating what a physical device can do. So for example, one of the things that it does is amp modeling. So you take a uh, Fender you know, amplifier from the 50s and you duplicate its sound and its functionality and its capabilities 
by programming it through software. Um, and the goal is to create something through software, through firmware, that sounds exactly like that old Fender amp from the 50s. That's modeling. And that's one of the main things that the Helix does, is it models not only amplifiers, but cabinets and uh, effect devices that have been around for years and years and years. Now, one of the things you'll find about the modeling that, that Line 6 does is they have pseudonyms for the things that they're modeling due to copyright and, and patent infringement problems and that type of thing. The, uh, down below, you'll find links so that you can see the name that Line 6 has given a thing and what that thing uh, really is modeling. So uh, in addition to amps and effects, uh, you can also use impulse responses to even model a specific cabinet with specific microphone positions and even specific microphones. It's truly amazing what it can model. And um, why do you care that it models? Well, because rather than being stuck with one or two or 10 amplifiers in your studio, you've now added hundreds of amplifiers and effects pedals and all kinds of capability to your studio through this one device, through the Helix. Now, another thing that the Helix is, is it is an incredible dynamic interface to control all of these things that you have access to now and to even create the combinations that you want to create. I'd like to have this amplifier with these effect pedals available to me. Obviously, you know from just looking at your Helix that it's a stomp board, you know, and you can control... Uh, which preset you're using through that stomp board. You can then, when, when you're using a preset, turn on and off uh, the various effects that you might have configured with that preset. And it's even got an effects pedal that you can use uh, with all of those things. I've already used the word preset, and so one of the things that uh, the Helix does as part of its basic operations is it has a library of presets that was delivered with the Helix to you by Line 6, but you can create your own presets and you can copy the presets that came with the Helix and modify them so that they do what you want them to do. Uh, it's a great, great way to learn how to configure presets, by the way. So it is a very, it provides, the Helix provides a very dynamic interface for really controlling all of the things that we've just talked about. And you can control it at a very high level, but you can also really get in and geek out on the minutia that you can control of each effect, of each amp, of each cabinet, um, and how they all interact. So, the, the Helix is quite the thing for you to add to your studio and quite the thing for you to dive into to the extent that you want to dive into it. I assure you that you can use the Helix at a very high level without having to go in and configure anything if that's what you want. You've just automatically added to your studio many, many amps and many, many easy to access combinations. But if you're like me and you like to geek out a little bit on the tech, you're really going to enjoy the platform that is the Helix that you just added to your studio. It's time to get our hands on some buttons and knobs. And for this next part of this basic video, we're going to actually take a look at the Helix, both the docu some of the documentation, uh, which you have access to, and the Helix itself. So let's jump in. This image of the Helix is directly from the Helix 3.0 user's manual that you will find online at line6.com as shown previously. This shows the top uh, interface to most of the key functions of the Helix. We are gonna be focusing in the upper left area initially, which is where you really control your presets, uh, your set lists, and a lot of the key things that you'll do all the time with the Helix. You've got volume controls, your effects pedal, and of course, all your stomp controls here at the bottom, and we'll uh, be touching on those later. But for right now, let's focus on the upper left area. Um, we're going to really focus on some key controls here. 
and I will be demonstrating some of the functionality uh, live on my Helix. We're still looking at the manual right now. Okay, number one is the main display area, and of course you'll use that all the time. That's your major interface to what the Helix is doing. But number two is the preset button. So you press on that button to access the presets. You rotate it left and right to navigate through the set list. And again, I'll demonstrate that in just a few moments. Button seven is very important in that process. That is a joystick and it has functionality in many, many different modes of the Helix. But we'll initially be looking at the functionality as we navigate through the preset and the set list. Over back on the left, one button to know about is button number five down here in the lower left. That is the home button. If you get lost, if you're knee deep, many menus deep in something and you want to get back basically to the preset view you started with, you hit number five, that's going to take you to where you started. But number three is another important button to know about. That is the save button. If you are making changes that you wish to save, be sure to uh, press the save button. Uh, I've done uh, quite a bit of work and forgotten to save and uh, lost it. Okay, those are the key buttons that we will uh, use to explore uh, navigation in your presets and your set list initially. Now let's talk just a little bit about what we're looking at in the middle here because that's a major part of what you'll, you'll be dealing with with um, the Helix and especially if you're going to get into creating some of your own presets or modifying presets. So first thing it tells you up here at the top is what, pre, what set list preset number you're working with, in this case 16B. Uh, and then the interface is showing you the signal chain that you can create using various blocks that represent all the different functions and capabilities, amplifiers and um, you know, stomp boxes and everything else that you can drop in to your signal chain. And some signal chains are very, very simple and that's where we're gonna start. Some signal chains can be more uh, complex with multiple routes through the signal chain and, and things that go around other things. As you can see here, the visual map, the visual paradigm is really a very good way to, to look at and visualize what the preset is doing. Then down here at the bottom is a menu that will change depending on which block you've selected in the, in, as you're configuring a preset and uh, all the functions that you can control within that block. Now that's deeper than I want to get right now. We're going to start much more simpler, but that's kind of what you're looking at there in the main viewer when you're looking at a preset. Now let's switch over and actually look at the live rig. Okay, here we are looking at my Helix. So the first thing I want to show you is we, we are in the very first factory preset that comes with the Helix. And uh, depending on, you know, uh, your setup, this might be the first thing that pops up. Mo normally the last thing that I used is what's going to, is going to be what pops up when I turn on the Helix. All right, so I'm going to use the preset button. And I'm just going to click it down. That is going to take me to the set list. You'll notice that there is a left-hand side and a right-hand side. The left-hand side are the groupings of presets, and the right-hand side is the pre uh, preset grouping that you're currently in. So I'm currently in factory uh, number one, and I'm uh, what's highlighted there is the first preset in that list which says US double norm. I'll talk about what that means in just a second. Now this is where the joystick comes in. I can use the joystick, move it over to the left in this case, and that closes the right hand menu in this context. When I move it to the right, it opens the right hand menu up again. If I click on the uh, preset button again, it will take me back into that preset. So it takes me in and out. You can also click on the joystick and it will, in this context, do the same thing. The reason I say context is because many of the function knobs on the Helix do different things in different areas, so it depends on what you're doing. Now your Helix came with uh, the two factory preset set lists. There's also a user preset set list and I have a couple of uh, things that I put in here uh, on this particular Helix. So 
you may not have any user uh, content to start with, but if you download presets, create your own presets, make copies of the presets that are already in uh, the Helix, that's where that's going to come into play. Now this is a little beyond where we are right now, but just a brief discussion of how things work within the preset and within uh, the context of creating or modifying a preset. The joystick will move you back and forth between the blocks in the signal chain. Now this is a pretty straightforward signal chain. Uh, the amp and other effects and you'll learn over time that there is a rhyme and reason to the symbology. So the amp, which of course is the US double norm, um, is represented by the, the block that looks like an amplifier. And at the bottom of the screen, when you selected a given block, which you do just by moving to it, by navigating to it, you'll see the parameters that can be modified with the buttons down here um, below. And you can also, there may be multiple banks of buttons, so you can navigate to the additional banks of buttons as well. Now, if I want to take a look at how did, you know, how was this amp selected, I can just press down on the joystick that actually takes me to the amp list, and you can see what's selected just by looking at the arrows over on the right, or on the left, I should say. You can see which bank has been selected from the list of different things you can select from, and then by get, and again, by navigating over to the right, it takes you back where you started. Now, if you get lost here, this is a great place to remember the home button. So for any of the signal blocks here. You can drill into it just by clicking the button and see how that was selected from which list of device types, subtypes, and then the device itself. Remember that home function to get you back where you started without having to make another selection. So as we get into talking about how you define presets, that's how you'll be able to add an amp a pedal, a modulation, etc. There's all kinds of different capabilities built into the Helix. Now I mentioned once before that the uh, presets, um, most of them are named after an amp. Um, or many of them I should say are named after an amp. There's a lot of different preset names that mean different things. So what does US double NRM mean? I don't even know what the NRM, I think it means normal, I'm not sure. But where did Line 6 come up with these names? Well, the name is uh, an amp that is based on a, a real-life amplifier. But Line 6 avoided using the name of the real-life amplifier because of copyright infringement and, and other problems like that. Down below, as I said, there is a document linked. And uh, that document looks like this. And it is a cross-reference to the uh, from the, the name that Line 6 gave that preset to the actual amplifier. So right here you can see the uh, US double norm entry. And you can see that that is based on the uh, Fender Deluxe Reverb uh, with a normal channel. Okay, So that document will come in useful for you to know what you're looking at and be able to select the, the uh, amp that you actually want to play with. They have a wide variety of amps. They've created many new amps, but um, some of the most famous amplifiers ever played on are available in the Helix. You just have to know what it is called. Similarly, and for your reference, there is a website link posted that gives you the effects list, what it's called in the Helix, and what that is based on. So let's just look at uh, the first item in the list here um, that is called the Minotaur, and uh, it gives us the uh, subcategory for that device that you'll find, uh, where, or where that device is located within what subcategory for the effects. And then that is based on, uh, in this case, the uh, Kalon Centaur, which I'm not uh, familiar with myself. But there are many effects uh, that you may or may not have used that you may or may not want to use. And 
if you know what they're based on in real life, that helps you locate what they're, what they're uh, called in the helix. There are a couple of operations that you will certainly want to do as you get going with the helix. One is that you'll want to be able to copy uh, a preset, rename it if you want to, but modify it as you want to uh, for your use. The second is you'll want to add some of the presets to your favorites. So let's look at how to do those two things. We're now going to make a copy of a preset so that we can use it for whatever we want and modify it in any way that we wish. Now this is my recommended procedure. The first thing I recommend that we do is see where we're going to copy the preset to. And then the second thing is that I recommend that you make the copy first before you start modifying it. Okay, so we are on the preset that we want to copy. So I'm going to exit and I'm going to go down, I'm going to use the joystick, I'm going to go down to the user for list, which I believe to be clear. Okay, it looks like it is a clear list. Now, one thing you need to note here is that user for is actually set list number six. It has a number and you need to know that number. So let's go back up to our factory number one, where we will find our US double norm that we want to make a copy of. And all we have to really do here is hit the save button that we haven't used before. Save. Now, the bottom row control is very important here. And I'm going to change this control set list, and I want to change that to number six. Then I'm going to make note of the destination. The destination is 1A, and that is exactly where we want to save our set list. Now I want to give this a new name. I can call it the exact same thing, that's just fine, but I'm going to give it my own name. So to clear out the old name, I'm going to use the delete control right here. Then I'll use the joystick knob to begin putting in letters. And I'm actually only going to rename this to the letter K. Okay, we've got that in. Now all I have to do is hit the save button right here. Okay, I now have a copy of US double norm that is called K. It is in the user for set list and we can see it at the top of that list right there. And that's how easy it is to make a copy of a template. Now we can begin to modify K as much as we want, change anything we want about it without any problem with the original preset that it was named from. Later on you'll discover a feature of the Helix called favorites and it is used to save your favorite amps, effects, etc. for use in different presets. There's no real way to save a full preset as a favorite. However, you have four different user lists and an easy solution is to rename them one of them to be favorites. So to do that is very simple. We're going to simply point to the list that you want to be your favorites list and then use the function shown to rename the list. And then just as before, you'll want to get rid of the name that's already there and replace it by putting in the word favorites or whatever you want to call your favorites list. When you've got your label the way you want it, go ahead and click OK. And now you have a favorites list and can easily copy any of your presets to that list. It's time to physically connect our guitar. So after a quick look at the manual, taking a look at the connections capability on the back of the Helix, we'll go ahead and connect one of my guitars to the Helix. Here again from the Helix user's manual is an image and a map to the rear panel of the Helix. I'm not going to go through every single connection back here, but the key ones that you'll initially use and that I'll be using in this video. On the right hand side you'll see your power switch, your power connection, you'll also see the USB 2.0 connector 
uh, that you need to do updates and other things that you can do to support the Helix. Be sure to save that cable because of the USB 2 connector. Over on the left hand side as we face the back of the Helix unit, number 20 is your guitar input and that's what I'll be using to put, uh, plug my guitar in here in just a moment. And then uh, number 25 is the XLR outputs for the Helix and I'll be using the left or mono in the video uh, presentation that I'll, I'll be uh, showing you shortly here on how to connect your Helix. But right next to number 25 is the, uh, the quarter inch outputs that you can use as well. So whether you're connecting to a mixer or to a powered speaker uh, or as, as I am to my, my DAW through an audio interface, you can use either the quarter inch or the XLR outputs to get your signal out. Okay, let's put some of what we have learned into practice and hook up my guitar to my Helix and my Helix to a sound system. Now, it goes without saying that before you hook something up for the first time, you want to make sure all your volume levels are down low so that you can hook up, bring your volume levels up, know this working, and not blow your ears out. Um, now, I've already done all that before I did this recording, of course, not wanting to blow up my equipment. But um, one thing I'll just make note of is we're just going to be cycling through the uh, uh, first, uh, you know, presets uh, that, you know, in the, in the factory default that we've been working with. And most of those use the, the uh, effects pedal for volume. So I've just got that at about 50% or so. Okay. And also... I, I'm doing something special here so that uh, the sound ends up on the video and all that type of thing. So I'm, I'm actually running this into my audio system where you'd be running it into a mixer or a powered speaker or an amp or just your headphones. All right, so um, in the inset, uh, you'll see a close-up of what I'm doing on the back here. Per the manual, I'm going to plug my guitar into the third quarter inch jack, the guitar in. And that's uh, from the right side as I face the helix, from the left side as the camera faces the helix. And then uh, to get into my audio system, I'm taking the XLR uh, mono or left out. And there we go. And at this point, you are probably hearing uh, a little hum uh, from, from the helix. Um, and I've got headphones on my end too, so I'll put those on so I can hear what's going on. Turn my guitar volume up, and uh, this is, uh, of course, good old U.S. double norm. So we'll just cycle through some of the settings here. Oh, that one's got a little more noise on it. You'll notice that with the with the Helix presets, that they've uh, all got their own noise levels. A lot of them are perfectly quiet, very polite. And it's fun just to go through and, and listen to these for the first time. So, that's how easy it is to hook your guitar up to your Helix and your Helix up to what amounts to a variety of different audio systems. And uh, we'll just move on from there. Finally, in our basic introduction, we're going to go through the basic functions of the foot switches. The foot switches just do a lot, as you'll see. We're just going to go through three of the most basic functions that they have before we conclude. The foot switches can be a very important part of the functionality of your Helix, and we're going to go through the most basic elements of that functionality now. There are two rows of six foot switches. Usually, the leftmost of the foot switches is used for bank navigation. 
the rightmost of both rows of the foot switches have a specific function. And I'll show you one of those functions right now. It is the tuner. The lower right button on the bottom row activates the tuner. Press and hold it with your hand or with your foot to activate. Once activated, it operates as many tuners operate. Simply pluck the string that you want to tune. The tuner will indicate whether you're high or low, and you can tune from there. Notice there are other tuner functions at the bottom, which over time you'll get to know, and it is a very, very flexible tuning system. The second mode of operation is what I call preset mode. Each preset can be programmed with one or more functions that you can activate and uh, turn on and turn off with the foot switches. For example, our good old US double norm 01A preset has several different effects that can be activated via the switch, foot switches, including a chorus, uh, the red squeeze, uh, the minotaur, you can see that the red squeeze is currently activated. So when we're playing, we're going to hear that effect. To turn it off, you simply click the foot switch, of course. You will learn as you configure presets that you can determine whether the foot switches are active or not for the, for the effects and where they show up on the foot switches. Finally, you can navigate through your presets using the leftmost top and bottom foot switches. These will navigate you through the banks four at a time, uh, and you can navigate as far as deeply into your set list as you want with the foot switches. I'll activate by clicking the lower left button. Notice that the middle four of each row is currently blinking and showing the name and, and designation of presets. So the lowest row right now shows, beginning with 01A, the US double norm preset, and that we could navigate through the set list by clicking the up list from there. So if I want to go to 02A, I simply click it. that pulls up that preset, and that is, that is now the preset that I'm using. If I want to go back to 01A, I can simply click the button again, and then click the flashing 01A. This is a very convenient way to navigate through your presets, and you can imagine that if you set up one of your user set lists with an evening's entertainment, um, and the, the presets that you want to use, it'd be very, very easy for you to navigate through them during live performance. Now, the foot switches have many, many other functions and are really a powerful part of the programmability of the Helix, and you'll get to know that over time. But this is a basic introduction to these functions, and this is the most basic functions of the foot switches. Thanks for joining us for this part one of our series on the Line 6 Helix. I'm looking forward to putting together a good series for you. Please join us for the following chapters. See you next time.